Before we get started, make sure you hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons, and be sure to check back regularly so you don't miss out. Yeah, I'm just saying, it, it, it depends, it depends what is there originally. Okay. Well, if, it's just, if it's just dirt, then it, yeah, it's just going to be weeds yeah. and some earth. Okay, can you give any example in life where you, where there's something which never existed, which wasn't in existence, and it came into existence by itself? Like, for, for example, ev everything I know in my limited life experience, like your shirt, your bag, uh, your shoes, this table, everything, the, the camera, the microphone. I know just by looking at them, without seeing them being made, I know that someone made it. I know that someone designed it. And I could never imagine that these things came into existence without a maker, without a designer. So now, if we put that on a, on a larger scale, I, I just don't see how it's possible. I, I understand the point. I understand the point. Like, if, if, give me a practical example of something coming to existence without a maker. It's true, yeah. Everything needs to be created, but... It's like... So are you still an atheist after saying that? Are you, an atheist is someone who says there is no God. I would say... I'm, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's a hard one. Because it's like you've got to probably think about it, innit? Um, yeah, why not? I, like, I, I, don't, I don't mean to be rude, but I find it so strange. I, I think people who are atheists, it's generally social conditioning. Either they think that science can answer everything, or they're skeptical, they don't want to just blind follow, or maybe they have um, a bad experience or a bad opinion of religion. So therefore, at least to say they're atheist. But atheism, in the Quran, chapter 52, it's quite, it's quite interesting, it's just two verses. Allah, Allah he asked a question. So, uh, four things are mentioned in these two, two verses. Were they created from nothing? Or did they create themselves? And did they create the heavens and the earth, as in the, the, the earth, the sky, everything? Then, it, then the verse finishes by saying, but rather they have no, uh, uh, no certainty. They have no certainty. So here, it's, it's a very simple question. Were they created from nothing? So nothing existed, and then from that nothing, we came into existence. The simple answer is, no, nothing cannot create something. Yeah. So the next option is, or did they create themselves? Like, if we didn't exist, can we bring ourselves into existence? The answer is no. So without mentioning it, it necessitates there has to be a creator. There has yeah. to be a creator. And then it, then it continues by saying, or oh, did they create the heavens and the earth? So even if human beings came into existence, you know we need to live on a, on a planet. There's one, um, one person who was, what's his name, Anthony Flew. He was a very famous atheist. Before he passed away, he began to believe in, in a God. I'm not sure what religion he chose, but he actually died believing there has to be a God. So he gave a number of examples. One of the examples he gave, he said, imagine um, you're on a journey. You come to a hotel. And this is paraphrasing this example. When you come to the hotel, you get taken to your room. The walls is your favorite color. There's music playing, it's your favorite song. There's on the, on the bed, there's a, like a, a, a nice scent, an aftershave. It's your favorite smell. Food is brought and it happens to be your favorite food. There's a book there for you to read. It happens to be your favorite book. If all these things happened and you haven't discussed with the hotel management, you haven't told anyone about your journey, would you not think that this room has been prepared for you? Or would you think this is just an amazing coincidence? Yeah, I would say it's the first view, but how would they even know that information? That's the, that's the question. No, I'm just saying it happened, just, just for example. Now, so when human beings are born on this planet, 
or we come into existence on this planet and we have the right level of uh, the air we breathe. Uh, sorry, can you speak a bit louder? I can't hear you. Sorry, we have, we have the air we breathe. Yeah. We have the atmosphere we live in. We have the right level of gravity. We're close enough to the sun that we have heat. Not too close that we burn up. We're not too far away that we freeze. We have seasons. You have uh, females who you can have relationships with. You have uh, the system of the rain. For someone to say, this is just um, by chance and it's random and it just happened and, say, and then say science. Like, yeah, but tell me how science explains it. You can't just, you can, like people accuse us, like they call it the God of the gaps, that anything we can't answer, we say God done it, God done it. But you can't have a science that just say, oh, science, we don't. But what's interesting, what's interesting is the last part, part of the verse, it says, Bella yuqinun, but they have no certainty. This was said 1,400 years ago, and it, we believe this Quran is the speech of God, the speech of Allah given to the last messenger, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But just take it that this came from a man in the desert 1,400 years ago, that he made this statement, that they have no certainty. If you look now, if you read books, if you look on, online, and you look at people who call towards atheism and say atheism is correct and is the right way, as the Quran says, none of them have certainty. They will say, it could be this, it's possible it's this, we think this is most likely, but we're not sure, we're still looking, science will have the answer in the future. How can, this, how can a book 1,400 years ago, which came from a man who could not read or write, in the desert, say, Bella yuqinun, they have no certainty. And up until this day, none of these people have certainty. Wow. This is messing up my mind. <laughs> Why? Why is it's it messing like, up your mind? It's, it's very it's straightforward. Quite opening, I would say eye opening in a way. I, I like her, her perspectives, isn't it? Yeah. And no, it's good it's to just, speak. Now that I'm thinking about it, it does make sense. It, it's it's reasonable. It's reasonable. Yeah. So, so the thing is, I would say that's why I mentioned in the beginning of the Quran. It says. How do you disbelieve in Allah? And when the question is put on the atheist, I don't hear a good answer. Like even if you talk about uh, evolution, no, explain to us how life started. You have objects like you have dust, you have rocks. Explain life, explain life. How, how did life come about? Like, you know, if, you, if a person dies here, I mean, we're all going to die. When I die, as long as I die in a state where I'm physically not harmed, my dead body is going to have eyes. It's going to have a nose, a mouth, it's going to have a heart, lungs, but nothing's working because the life has been taken out. What we would say the soul. Explain that, oh Mr. Scientist. <laughs> See, I, I, see that's, that's why for me, this is just the, the issue of um, God. But I would say then when you go on about Islam, messengers, books, uh, the rules of Islam, the legislation, obviously you can say, well, you would say that you're Muslim, but I would say it's all reasonable. It all makes sense. So now, do you, do, you, do you believe there's a God or you think it's very likely or um, you need to think about it more? You need to find more, excuse, chance, more excuses? The chance, the chance that it's God. How, how big is that but chance? It makes sense. It does make sense. Is it 50-50? No. 80-20? I'm not too sure. I'm not, I need to think about it. I need to think about it more. Just, just show, the, show, the show me. It does make sense. Though. Show me something which came into existence without a maker. Everything was made. I, I, I heard that. So why can't that apply to me and you? Like, am I, am I not more complicated than uh, than these cameras, than your computer at home? And we would we would never believe that these things made themselves. So how about myself? Like now we're we're thinking physical, but think about memory. Think about emotions, feelings. Conscience, awareness. 
Yeah, I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have to think about this, but yeah, this is important here. Let, let um, me just... definitely going to think about this in the future, but... What was your name, sir? You, sir. Sorry, you I should have asked. Cameron. 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 Can I just mention something else? So, this is one of the reasons why we believe in the Creator. Because the creation around us, we say, necessitates there should be a Creator. That's one reason. Second reason, which I think is stronger, is the natural state of the human being to recognize God. If you leave human beings alone, you don't influence them, they will believe in God. That's why, I'll explain why, in every society, in every place, wherever they use different words, different descriptions, people have always believed in a higher power, a God, whatever name they call it. Even those people who are idol worshippers or they believe in multiple gods, all of them will tell you, but there has to be one main God. And all these gods are you know, intermediaries, like middlemen, a means to go to the main God. So this is something which is in the human part. The, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, Every child born is born upon a natural state to recognize one God. Then his parents will change him to a Jew, a Christian, a fire worshipper. Society will change them. But human beings left alone, they believe in God. And generally people, they don't find satisfaction or purpose without believing in God. So that's, that's a second reason. A third reason is, it's a continuous message. Like, we believe that Judaism, Christianity, they have elements of truth, but they have been corrupted. But that continuous message amongst mankind, that there's, there is one God, worship that God. This is, you know, through history of mankind, this has always been there. So I, I would say, like, I'm, I'm not gonna, you have to answer me now, but I would say the reasons to believe in God far outweigh any reason not to believe in God. Yeah, so I don't have a kind of you know, anything. But yeah. And then, and then, just how busy are you? Cause I don't want to take up all your time. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to go home and see you, but uh, that's not always good. Can I, can I just? So when we say there's, so you can, you can stop me at any time because I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. O overload you. I'm gonna listen to this last point now. Okay. okay. So that's the point I mentioned earlier. When there's, if we ask everyone here today in Stratford, the purpose of the sun, the purpose of the rain, the purpose of your shoes, the purpose of your watch, everyone will give, generally give the same answer. And they will, they, and they will know the answer. But when you ask people, what's your purpose? Now people become confused. Some say it's to be happy, to have children, Everyone else is like everyone has, everyone has their purposes though. But is it real, or is it just is it just made up? Like we would say, the purpose is always given by the maker. Like the purpose of your bag, the reason why the person made it. I mean, obviously they wanted to make money, but it's for you to. It's, it's they want to make a product that you want to use to carry stuff around. So the purpose is given by the maker. So we would say the one who made us gives us our purpose and that purpose has to be conveyed to us by sending the books and by sending messages i'll just in the quran is very clear it mentions allah says i did not create jinn which is a separate creation and mankind except to worship me we have been the only reason why we are created is to recognize our creator and worship him. Why? Why do? You, why? Why do? Why worship him? Okay. When we say worship, because obviously we're speaking English and we're brought up here in Islam. I think in Europe, worship is like some type type of rituals. But in Islam, worship is everything. As in, obviously praying, fasting, giving charity, but respecting your parents, looking after your parents. Uh, taking care of your wife, taking care of your children, going out and earning money, all of this is considered worship. But there's two reasons why we worship the Creator. Two main reasons. One, 
because he deserves it. As in, he is the almighty, the all-knowing, the all-merciful. He owns us, he created us. So he deserves to be worshipped. You'll find if a person doesn't worship the Creator and doesn't submit to the Creator, they'll submit to something else. But that's one. But second reason is, in Islam teaches very clearly that if all mankind was to worship the Creator, it would not benefit him in any way. If all of us were to disobey him and turn away from him, it would not harm him or lower his status in any way. So this worship is for our own benefit, our own benefit in this life and our own benefit in the hereafter. So in Islam, when it says, for example, that you can have, a, you can have a sexual relationships, but only inside marriage. This is something which is good for you. This is something which is good for your wife. This is something which is good for your children. This is something which is good for society. So this would be considered worship, worshiping the Creator, but it's for our benefit. When the worship, when the, the Creator says, "Do not drink alcohol, uh, do not um, deal in interest, you know, uh, yeah, interest-based transactions," this is something which is beneficial for us. It doesn't benefit the Creator in any way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's beneficial for us. So that's that's why we we understand we've been created to, to worship the Creator, and that's what we're going to be questioned about once we die. Come on, how does that sound? It makes, it makes sense, yeah, it makes sense. Did you expect it to make sense? No. Because there's, a, there's an idea, I'm Muslim, I'm going to blame Christianity, but there's an idea of religious people, it just says, it's just emotional. Don't ask questions, just believe. No, Islam encourages to ask questions. Why? Why this? Why that? And we are confident that the, the Quran, the speech of Allah, and the Sunnah, the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad will give clear, straightforward answers for the person who is sincere. Yeah, makes sense. Well, yeah, I, I go, I go think about this. No problem. And we're here every yeah, Saturday. Every Saturday. Yeah, any questions? Or you can ask your Muslim friends or stuff. Can I give you something to read? Uh, sure. Uh, this is a, a Quran and then some basic leaflets on Islam. Okay, cool. Uh, What's your name, sorry? Yusuf. Yusuf. Nice like like you. Joseph. Thank you very much for your time. No worries, man. Okay, all the best. Take care. Come back.